Welcome to the 25th beginning Java tutorial. Can you believe we're at number 25? Well, we just keep trucking along here. In today's tutorial, we are going to discuss the super keyword. Now, there are two ways to use the super keyword. One is with methods. The other is with constructors. In today's example, we're going to use the super keyword with methods. So I just created a very simple program here to show you how a super keyword works, because that's all we really need to do to explore this concept. And it's actually a very simple concept, but some people try to make it a lot more confusing than it really should be. So in this program, we have a child class, which also could be called a subclass, by the way. And we are going to inherit everything from this base class, which is over here. We're going to inherit the methods and variables that we define over here. As you can see, it's empty right now. It won't be in a little bit, but it is now. And so this is our base class, which also can be called a super class, whatever you want to call it. So let's go back to our child class, and we're just going to print out that this was printed from child class. This class right here. Everything stays right in here. So let's go ahead and run that. Great. Look at that. It worked. Okay. Are you guys surprised? I'm not. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this over into the base class. And now the only change we're going to make here is that this was printed from the base class. Let's go back here. And you'll notice we got some IntelliSense here saying, um, yeah, you just added a method with the same name over here. Uh, which one do I use? Now, we're not going to actually add the override they want us to add. Well, let's go ahead and run this, and you'll find out which one gets printed out. Yep, you guessed it. It's from the child class. And the reason is we are inheriting that method of the same name from the base class, but this one right here gets precedence. Now, you're wondering, well, now how on earth do I get to this print something method in the base class and use that one? with the same name. Now, okay, yeah, I can go ahead and change the name, but what if you need to keep these the same name? I mean, who knows? Maybe they're doing something very similar and you don't want to change a name because you'll get confused. That is where the super keyword comes into play. So let's type that in right now. And we'll go down here and pull the method. And great, there we go. Now, we don't need to print this out from the child class anymore because we want to go ahead and print out the method from the base class. Now you could go ahead and leave that if you wanted to, but we really don't want to do that because we're trying to show how this concept works perfectly. So let's go ahead and run this and look at that. It printed it out from here. So all we said was, hey, I want you to use this method right here from our super class, which is base class. And another way to think of this, it's kind of a nice thing because, hey, you know exactly where this is coming from. You may write, you may come back to this code like, you know, a year later and wonder, where is this coming from? I thought this was coming from here. This will unconfuse you and say, no, you were using this method from the super class. So it's kind of like a reminder in a way as well. That's the way I like to think of it. Okay, so one final time, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. We basically use the super keyword to override this method and go to the super class method and use this one here to do our print. All right, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next tutorial where we will explore the super keyword with constructors.